uh well yeah just be humble you know don't come into it thinking that you're the next best thing in the hunting industry because like you say i mean there's a lot of guys that think they're the next best thing in the hunting industry and chances are you are talented and you bring something to the table that nobody else has ever seen but it's going to go a whole lot further if you have a friendly humble approach to it than trying to shove it down people's throats and telling Spons- them sponsorship hack better. sponsorship hack number one <laughs> don't show up to the first meeting with your photo album of all the big stuff you've killed <laughs> don't lead with that that's like the number one turnoff that's lead. the way it was when i came into it oh yeah like, dude i remember people walking around dude, with their photo albums dude people packing around their bucks <laughs> like, oh yeah <laughs> like <laughs> literally packing around heads oh my god i would run the other way when i was at sitka <laughs> if i saw that the physical photo albums were the worst because they they would pull them out of their bed they'd be like do you have a minute and I know if someone says that, <laughs> I automatically don't. <laughs> yeah, but, exactly. And it's like, it, yes. And then like, <laughs> like, like a saber out of their backpack comes this, <laughs> this huge photo album. And it's like, let's start 10 years ago. Oh, Here's man. the bull I shot. It scored 321 and an eighth. And then it, this, that, that, I'm like, oh my God, dude, I'm glazed over. I'm done. This is not yeah. happening. But if you come in and been like, and actually the best way to do it is just go have go integrate into the industry give give your product away for free give your time away for free go make friends be authentic like go on adventures with cool people that are already more successful than you and keep putting out your product, keep working hard, people notice it and all of a sudden you might get your first sponsorship and then the second one and then the third one the worst way to go about it is the things we just described, right, Jace? Yeah, for sure. No, I mean, you look at the people who have been able to break through and they're all very down to earth, very approachable, very humble people. Um, the people that are not that way get weeded out pretty quickly and uh, are a bit alienated in a room, you know? Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, and that's, I don't know, it's its a funny industry because one thing that I've gotten really just tired of over 13 years is people thinking that because I have a TV show or because I have a following that I'm trying to prove that I'm a better hunter than them or like, you know, trying to prove that I know more than them. And I can't tell you how many times I've said I'm not a better hunter. I probably don't know more than you about what you're talking about. What I have is time, just time in the field. And that's what makes me successful year after year. And when you spend that much time in the field year after year, you're going to learn a thing or two. I mean, this year I killed my bull on the fourth day of the season. Last year, I spent 28 days out there and never never uh, even came to full draw on a bull. And yeah, so, people, pe- hunter, hunters, well, this is a... I think this is just a male problem. We are naturally wired to be territorial and threatened. And especially if you're like an alpha male, right? There's this thing where if you see somebody on a screen doing something that you feel like you're good at, you automatically take that as a threat as, as this person is trying to tell me they're better than me just because they're on TV. Like I, I hear people say all the time, like for, just for an example, Jason, like Steve Rinella, I can't believe he has a show on Netflix. He's not even that good of a hunter. It's like, I don't think Steve, I don't know him personally, but I don't think Steve would tell you he's the best hunter. Like Steve gets to spend a lot of time out there. He's probably definitely one of the most well articulated hunters I've met and seen. Uh, but as far as like skill level, I think he's a really good hunter, but I don't think he tricks himself into thinking he's the best hunter on earth. What he is really good at is telling stories and speaking and uh, I guess uh, representing the sport, for example. Um, There are people that I know that I will not mention names that will tell you they think they are the best hunter on earth. And that, so that does exist, but most of the time the people on TV or in these YouTube channels, they don't think they're the best hunters. And if they do deep down, they know they're not because I have more news for you folks. 
how would you even determine if you're the best hunter? Like, what are your metrics? How do you measure that? I, I've tried to think about how that would even be done. If it could be done, like you, like for example, in golf or the NBA or baseball, like there's real science behind that, but the variables in hunting are so wide ranging. For example, like if you have enough money, you can pay to shoot just about whatever you want. You can shoot the biggest stuff. So big doesn't necessarily mean you're the best hunter. Then you could say, well, if it's public or private, okay. Well, what about if I draw the best tag in Wyoming and I shoot a big bull on public? Does that mean I'm the best hunter? No, it just means I drew the, a great tag and I shot a nice bull, right? Mm -hmm. so, so then you might say, well, it, it, it's if you've got every species. Well, no, I can pay to do that. If I have the time and the money, I could do, totally, just about anybody could do that. With uh, So then you're like, well, it's the weapon. If you're, if you're traditional, that means you're the greatest hunter. Well, not so much. I don't, I don't think that's right either. Um, so like you can go around and around in circles, but the reality is, is there's no way to measure that. So, and the, the even bigger point is, is who fucking cares? Who cares yeah. if like this, this is not, and should not be a competition. Uh, you can have fun with buddies, right? Like, oh, I shot a bigger bull than you, you loser, you know, stuff oh, like yeah. that. Who cares? Meat bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Jason and I do that all the time. <laughs> like he texted me his 400 inch bull this year and that's my first response. Nice meat bowl. Uh, but he knows that I'm kidding. And it's just like, that's just what your buddies do. But if you truly think that you're the best hunter, I got news for you. Most likely you are not. Absolutely. You might be the best, the perceived best within your narrow niche in hunting, for example. Like, sure. I'll give you an example of that. Like, I think Dustin Rowe is probably one of the best sheep guides there is. But yeah, I would, I would not, I, I, I don't know if there's a way to measure if he is the best, nor do I even care. He's definitely one of the best, but, and you could do that with elk and every, and so on. But the point is it's so pointless. It does not matter. So right. that's not, that's not the greatest angle to come at it. And if you feel threatened, you should check yourself. Be like, you know, if you're, if you find yourself watching Jason's show and you say, why is he, he's trying to act like he's a better hunter than me. It's like, well, that actually might be you getting defensive because you're insecure because in reality, Jason doesn't even know who you are. He doesn't care if he's a better hunter than you. He's just telling his own stories, right? You know, it's, it's also obnoxious.